Mr. Knapp co-founded the South Carolina Small Business Chamber of Commerce in February of 2000 and serves as its president and CEO. He also serves as co-chair of the American Sustainable Business Council Action Fund and is the president of the Knapp Agency, an advertising and public relations firm. Uh, Mr. Knapp, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Chairman Rish. Thank you, Chairman Rish, Ranking Member Shaheen, and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. I'd like to start with some facts. Most regulations affecting small businesses come from local and state governments. According to polling by the American Sustainable Business Council, 86% of small businesses believe that regulations are necessary, and 93% believe their business can live with fair and manageable regulations. Regulations aren't killing the economy. Tens of thousands of new jobs are being created every month. In February, South Carolina had the largest one-month increase in the number of people working. Regulations level the playing field with big business and protect small businesses from unfair competition. Regulations create opportunity for entrepreneurs and small businesses to innovate and grow by creating new products and services requiring new jobs. And small business owners care about their families, neighbors, workers, communities, and environment, which they want to keep safe and healthy, the goal of regulations. So how are small businesses involved in the regulatory development process? Both the, flexibility, or excuse me, both the Regulatory Flexibility Act and the Small Business Regulatory Enforcement Fairness Act give small businesses impacted by proposed regulations the opportunity to weigh in on the regulation development process to let federal agencies know how their businesses would be impacted and encourage modifications to make the regulations less burdensome. This process isn't serving our small businesses very well. It takes years and years to promulgate a rule. Small businesses across this nation really aren't having input into the regulatory decision-making process. The process has been taken over by powerful, often big business special interest groups with their own agenda and have given us regulatory paralysis. Now, how do small businesses confront federal regulations that are of concern to them? They can personally contact the federal agency to ask for clarification or help in compliance. The more effective approach would be to contact the Office of the National Ombudsman and ask for assistance in trying to resolve their regulatory issue with a federal agency. Unfortunately, just as the regulatory decision-making process isn't serving small businesses well, compliance assistance is also inadequate. Here are my recommendations for regulatory reform that will actually benefit our small businesses. Balance the balance sheet. Why do we never see the benefits of regulations in any agency analysis? The positive side of the ledger is always blank when the potential impacts of regulations are analyzed. The economic, health, and social benefits of rules put in terms of dollars is not considered by the Office of Advocacy and the regulatory agencies. We often hear critics say that government should run more like a business. Well, businesses weigh the benefits versus costs when making a business decision. No business would invest in new equipment if they only considered cost. Whether the absence of analyzing the benefits of a regulation in the formal process is by statute or custom, this must change if we are to get truly accurate data for rulemaking decisions and give the public complete information about the value of regulations. Invest in better outreach and analysis. We've essentially starved the regulatory agencies and advocacy, while at the same time wanting them to do more. But that can't happen. Small business Outreach is primarily to Washington insiders who want to clog up the regulatory process through heavy lobbying, litigation, creating public anxiety by quoting huge bogus costs. Then the reform proposals that get the most attention fix the wrong problems and would just make more problems. The RFA process we have today simply needs more resources so it can run more effectively and efficiently. Given the agencies the, excuse me, give the agencies the resources to conduct a quality rulemaking analysis and outreach we all want. Final point, help small businesses understand the rules and provide compliance assistance. Once a rule has been finalized, the job of the federal government is not done. Small businesses need to be educated about the new rule and, when necessary, provided regulatory compliance assistance. Congress has also set up a process for this, not only within every regulatory agency, but also through the SBA Office of the National Ombudsman where the Office of Advocacy works on the front end of a development of a significant regulation, the Office of the National Ombudsman is charged with helping small businesses on the back end with all regulation compliance. It serves as the conduit for small businesses to have their grievances about compliance problems 
or other issues with federal agencies heard directly by the agencies in an effort for successful resolution. Now, in this way, the Office of the National Ombudsman and the agencies can detect patterns of compliance problems so that the agencies can revisit rules for modification. This important component of the rulemaking process is woefully underfunded. The Office of the National Ombudsman actually relies on volunteers to help get the message out about its vital small business services. It is, for the most part, unknown and underutilized. If Congress really wants to help small businesses with federal regulations, invest more in the small business outreach, support, and feedback loop. In conclusion, the current regulatory process can produce good rules while protecting small businesses from unnecessary burdens if we provide the adequate resources for agencies to expeditiously carry out the requirements Congress has already put in place on the front end and the back end of the process. Most regulatory reform proposals, while achieving the agenda of some seeking to delay and stop regulations, will inevitably fail to help the vast majority of small businesses. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today, and I welcome any questions the committee might have.